the brick story has kind of changed my professional life because it has become, I mean, it turned out to be so far much bigger uh, than we thought it would be 10 years ago. Uh, all four of them uh, grew quite a bit more than we originally expected. One of my fondest personal anecdotes was speaking at an event down in Sao Paulo. I think it was in late 2003. It was to a huge event of about a thousand people and the guy that introduced me and had invited me whispered in my ear, we all know here that the B is only there because without it there's no acronym. <laughs> uh, and that, that sort of uh, two years after still was the typical mood. And, and 10 years on, um, Brazil has certainly become bigger in dollar terms than Italy. And according to some sources, I'm not quite sure how they know this until we get both countries' data, but it's conceivable they are now bigger than the UK in, in dollar terms. And we'd said that Brazil might be able to get to the level of an Italy by uh, not until after 2020. Uh, so, of course, Brazil's, Brazil's had a, a really quite successful period too. It is the thing that always comes up, particularly in this country. But, and I happened to be at something at, uh, at DFID last Friday morning, and uh, it seems to be like a bit of a British mental disease, frankly, in my opinion, that you know, we don't like Russia, so we're not going to treat it as being a serious place. Um, hopefully we'll get into this later, but whilst Russia has got lots of problems uh, and lots of challenges, it is uh, more than 1% of global GDP, and on some of the numbers that we play around with, the increase in the dollar value of Russia's GDP in the decade ahead uh, is probably going to be close to, if not more, we actually have it bigger than the increase in the dollar value of the euro area's GDP. So if we choose to dislike Russia because of all these things and not want to have any engagement with them, it seems not to be a particularly smart thing for a country which has got uh, the post-crisis challenges that we have. So. There's me on my soapbox about the Russia thing. If you weight them equally, the lowest of the four bricks is India, not Russia. So to some incoming email traffic, which I get, I, I, I usually get at least one email a day, when am I going to drop the R in brick? Some days it's more. <laughs> so people I know well, I say, well, when you let me drop India. Um, on the 13 things that are relevant to productivity and economic growth, you put them all together, Russia does not score as lowly as India. And on technology-related things and education, way, way better. They don't understand the intensity and, or, or rationale about why we all go on about the, the rem NIMBY all day long. I, actually, as it happens, neither do I anymore, given how much it's moved and how much world trading balances are changed. I'm not sure the rem NIMBY is undervalued at all anymore, but conceptually, they don't really understand why we're all so obsessed by it. Uh, and that, that's something that's got to change. Can we, can we ever have... I, I was asked a great question at a Goldman event a few months ago, just before... Uh, Lagarde was elected. Is it conceivable that we could have a Chinese head of the IMF? I.e., could that person make a decision without putting a few phone calls back to Beijing? And I said, well, I doubt Lagarde could do that without a couple of back to Paris and Europe either. But <laughs> if you speak to anybody that participates in G20 events, they'll tell you how uh, irritating they are because there's so many of them. Uh, and there's so many people there, you, it's tough to get stuff done. And, I, and especially with this remarkable crisis in the euro area, you know, just symbolically, if these countries in the euro area really want to tell people that the euro is for, forever, when they share a common monetary policy and that supposedly all on the verge of signing this great fiscal compact, I call it compost, um, <laughs> why, why, why are they not meeting as one? It's a real poor sign of leadership and global awareness. I think it's atrocious. 
And this kind of game that goes on with Washington and, and various European capitals, you have the IMF and we have the World Bank, it, it's got to stop because what, you'll, what we will find is they will lose that, those institutions will lose their relevance for, for these countries.